Hi, I'm Craig the Geologist, and I've got a simple question for you today. What are rocks? It seems like kind of an obvious question, but you know, sometimes the simplest questions are the ones we kind of skip over and don't think about because it feels like it should be obvious. Later, uh, it can create some real difficulties for us when we realize we've never actually thought about the answer before. So what is a rock? The definition is pretty simple. It is a naturally occurring solid substance made out of one or many varieties of mineral. So let's go through it step by step. It has to be a solid substance, all right? Um, are there liquid rocks? Well, magma is liquefied rock, of course, but we don't consider magma to be rock until it cools. Um, how about uh, water? Is water rock? No, no, it's not because it's not solid. Once it becomes ice, is that a rock? Well, by most definitions, yes. I personally hate that, but it is technically a rock. Um, next up, uh, it has to be a collection of minerals. What are minerals? Well, minerals are uh, the building blocks of rocks, basically. Uh, minerals are substances that have a um, regular and predictable uh, chemical composition. So um, quartz is SiO4 technically, or SiO2 when you get a lot of it together. Uh, calcium carbonate, calcite, is CaCO3. Um, all calcite is CaCO3. If it's something else, then it's a different mineral. All right, so it has to be made of minerals, has to be solid, and it has to be naturally occurring. Uh, is asphalt a rock? Well, it's solid, it's made of a collection of minerals, but is it naturally occurring? No, it's not, it's man-made. There's no such thing as a man-made rock. Of course, we create rock-like substances all the time with concrete, asphalt, um, you know, half the granite countertops you get are man-made now, aren't actually cut from slabs of rock, uh, but those are not technically rocks. So where do rocks occur? Well, this may seem like a very obvious question also, everywhere. And that's kind of the correct answer. Um, certainly we live on a rocky planet. Uh, the inner planets closest to the sun are the rocky planets. The outer planets are the gas giants, and those probably have very little solid uh, material in their, in their centers. Uh, but here on Earth, rocks everywhere. And outside of Earth, the other rocky planets, of course, asteroids, meteors, you get rocks really occurring all over the place. The reason you get rocks occurring all over the place is pretty simple. Um, first of all, if it's a gas in outer space, it's usually gonna be dispersed or it's gonna be on a gas giant, which we don't live on. Uh, if it's a liquid, you get very few liquids floating around in outer space because of the zero atmospheric pressure up there, it all turns to gas. Uh, so all that really uh, leaves you with um, is solids. And uh, once those solids come together, made of minerals, you have a rocky material. Next question, and this is the big one, is how do rocks form? And that is an incredibly complex answer that can be broken down into a couple of simple categories. All right, obviously uh, every rock type forms differently from other rock types. Um, you know, that's what differentiates rock types, uh, but, there is a classification system. Let's begin with the starting point for all rocks, technically, igneous. Igneous rocks are rocks made of uh, magma or lava. The difference between magma and lava, a lot of people don't know this, but magma is just underground and molten. Lava is magma that's made it to the surface and uh, extruded from a volcano. Um, so all rocks technically uh, start off as igneous. I mean, the, the earth was molten at one point. So everything, if you go back far enough, begins as igneous rocks. Um, if they make it to the surface uh, and harden, that is called an extrusive rock, extrusive igneous. And if the magma is rising up uh, within the earth, 
but fails to make it to the surface, uh, that is an intrusive rock. And those names should feel pretty intuitive to you. If it's extruded from the Earth's surface, it's an extrusive rock. If it's inside of the Earth, it's an intrusive rock. What kind of impact does that have on the rock type? Well, your extrusive rocks are your lavas that you get from volcanoes. Uh, things like basalt. Right here, I have a piece of basalt with uh, olivine crystals running through it. The olivine formed deep within the earth and was carried up to the surface by the erupting lava. And right here, we have a basalt lava toe. This is a pahoyhoy toe. Pahoyhoy lava is a type of basalt lava and they form lobes, which are called toes, as they spread out across the surface. And this is the leading edge of a toe. Right here is a big mass of basalt lava um, with some other minerals in it. We've got a big piece of calcite hanging onto the top there and maybe some quartz running through it as well. But if you have a close look at this, you'll see that it is massive. There's not much to the texture. It is pretty much just black or dark gray rock. And even through a hand lens, getting real close up, you really can't see any crystals or large minerals standing out. Everything's very fine grained. Rhyolite is another extrusive rock. And again, you won't find crystals growing in that. You won't find large identifiable minerals. It's a pretty solid ground mass. On the other hand, you have the intrusive equivalent of a basalt, which is a gabbro. This is a gabbro here. And you can see black and very dark green crystals running all throughout this. It is made up entirely of these chunks of crystals. The extrusive equivalent of a rhyolite would be a granite. It's a piece of granite right here. There's a rougher piece right here. And you'll be able to see that it is made entirely out of identifiable minerals and crystals. The reason for that is pretty straightforward. Crystals get bigger the longer they have to grow. And we can actually measure that out. Uh, but for a basalt that's erupted at the surface and freezes hard in a matter of minutes, if not seconds, your crystals don't have time to grow. It's full of crystals. If you look at it through a microscope thin section, you'll see crystals all throughout it. But those crystals are microns in, in diameter. You, you can't see it with your naked eye. You can't see it even with a hand lens. Um, if you give it a few years underground to grow, they start to get, you know, a decent size. If you give it a few thousand years to grow underground, then you start talking about uh, getting crystals that are easy to see with the naked eye. Uh, pegmatites, you can have crystals the size of your hand, and those can take tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of years to cool in these massive mantle bodies, or in these massive magma bodies that uh, cool very slowly underground. The ground's a great insulator. And so if you get a massive plume of magma that's, you know, a couple of miles wide, it's gonna take a long time to cool underground. And it gives you a lot of time to grow some big chunky crystals. Now, if your igneous rock at the surface weathers down and breaks down, you can end up with a sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rocks come in two flavors, sort of like the igneous rocks do. Whereas igneous rocks are extrusive and intrusive, sedimentary rocks can be plastic or chemical. Now, sedimentary rocks 
are rocks that were, uh, well, the term sediment is to settle out of a solution. So a sedimentary rock is a rock that is composed of tiny fragments of other material, usually other rock, that have settled out, either from the air or most commonly in the water. Your classic sedimentary rocks are the most common. Um, conglomerates, where you have big cobbles that have rolled down from a mountainside uh, through a stream valley. Uh, sandstones, where uh, the river has deposited sand and the sand layers have built up and turned to rock over time. Mudstones, claystones, shales. Uh, these are all based on the size of the class, ranging from you know stuff the size of my fist down to microscopic size when you're talking about shales. Your other category here is chemical. Uh, your chemical deposition uh, sedimentary rocks, those are things like limestone, which is composed of um, the remains of tiny shell organisms, typically um, from shallow oceans. Uh, old reef systems, tons of shell material. Sometimes they're chock full of uh, uh, fossils. Sometimes uh, they're just composed of the material that was left behind by the decaying shells. Uh, but uh, your sedimentary rocks are, are rocks that have been weathered down from some other material and uh, left behind. Uh, examples of a sedimentary rock, well, we've got uh, sandstone right here. This is an ancient sandstone, almost a billion years old, from uh, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And it's gorgeous. This is Jacobsville sandstone. It was a uh, popular building material for many years. And you can see in here that the ancient mud cracks are still preserved in this sandstone. So, you know, there was a drought, cracks formed in the sand and mud, filled in, and what you're left behind with uh, is this. And we can still see those cracks preserved today. How about... Uh, some shale. Here is a light colored shale. Very, very fragile, literally made of just thin layers of mud that are kind of stuck together. Black shale is a great place to find uh, natural gas and coal. I'm sorry, not coal so much, but uh, oil, natural gas and oil deposits in. And again, it's this very very thin layers of very easily breakable material uh, that's basically just uh, mud that's stuck together. For limestone, I've got this big chunk over here to look at. Oh yeah, he's a big guy. Uh, this one's got all sorts of patterning on it, which is why I collected it. I wouldn't normally collect limestone because it tends to be a very boring looking rock. But this one's uh, a real beauty here. And yeah, it's, it's composed of minerals so small that you can't see them with the naked eye or with a hand lens. Um, uh, made out of the calcite that composed countless uh, shells in a shallow ocean at one point. This is probably about four or 500 million years old. Finally, let's talk about metamorphic rocks. I'm not even going to get up for that. Here we go. Metamorphic. Now we don't have broad categories in the metamorphic rocks the same way that we do for the igneous and the sedimentary. Metamorphic rocks are rocks that have started off either as igneous or sedimentary and been squeezed very dramatically under you know, entire mountain ranges um, or heated, and usually a combination of both. And what that pressure and heat does is it causes the uh, minerals that the rock is made out of to reorganize and it changes the rock type entirely. And there are some broad categories of, of uh, metamorphic rocks. We've got quartzites, which are uh, sandstones that have undergone uh, extensive metamorphism and the quartz sand grains have fused together. And you get some quartzites where you can actually see the sand grains still uh, glued together. 
others where the sand grains have all completely fused into one solid mass of quartz. Where you have mudstones and shales, they, those go through a series. So it'll start off as a thin shale, like so, and it will then transition to a slate, which will look very much like a shale, but quite a bit harder. Slate is something that um, pool table surfaces are made out of, uh, just underneath the felt, tend to be very flat, make a great surface for pool tables. Then after that, add a little more heat and pressure, it'll turn into a phyllite, something like this. Uh, a bit shale-like, but now you're starting to see it a bit uh, blockier and a uh, little bit more texture on it. And then it'll become a schist. A schist is made out of micas, so the minerals have really reorganized and grown out as mica plates. And uh, this is a mica, uh, sorry, this is a mica schist that has some nice garnets running through it. When these schists are forming, uh, it undergoes a lot of pressure, it takes a lot of pressure for everything to remineralize, and you can get some interesting textures in your schists. This is a crenulated schist, and uh, in this one, you can see the rock was literally scrunched up, and you can see this beautiful wavy texture called crenulations in it. Very, very cool. And then you keep adding temperature and pressure, and you end up with a nice. This is a nice nice right here. Nice spelled G-N-E-I-S-S, -S, German word. And it is also made of micas, but now you've got uh, dark colored and light colored minerals that are being to separate from each other and uh, forming these textures that you can see with the naked eye. Basalts can become uh, what we call metamorphic greenstones and uh, very mafic basalts and ultramafic rocks can become um, serpentinites with these beautiful green patterns running through them. So igneous rocks can weather to become sedimentary. Sedimentary rocks can be buried deeply to become metamorphic. Metamorphic rocks can undergo so much heating and pressure that they remelt entirely to magma and then become igneous. Igneous rocks can be buried deeply and become metamorphic. Metamorphic rocks can be weathered away to become sand and then sedimentary. This is called the rock cycle. This is something you probably learned in grade school a long time ago and then never thought about in your adult life. But that rock cycle is what controls um, the types of rocks you get. The rock cycle is our basic breakdown of where all the rocks on our planet come from. And as far as we know, all the rocks in the universe. There aren't a whole lot of other types of rock formation we think can happen on other planets because these are the basic processes sedimentation, metamorphism, and uh, the cooling of magma. So I hope that kind of explains what rocks are and where they come from a bit and helps you understand what you're looking at more when you're out in nature. Thanks for joining me.